Helldivers, we are leaking like you wouldn't believe, and this time around, we are talking about some serious firepower. I swear, this might be the biggest leak to date, and the items we're about to talk about, and in some cases, reveal, well, you just won't believe it. As always, my name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and let's dive in. Let's not bury the lead here. It looks like nukes are coming to Helldivers 2. Well, they're already here, but now we're gonna get to call them in as a stratagem. Just when you thought we couldn't get more explosive than the 500 kilogram, new leaks suggest players will soon have access to a nuclear bomb. My money is on this being a drop down and activate type of stratagem, almost like a hell bomb. A nuke deployed from an eagle seems a bit OP to me, but at the present, it certainly feels like enemies have an edge over the hell divers, so a tactical nuke dropped from a bird could balance the scales. At this time, there's no footage of the stratagem in action, but we do know the call-in is limited to one per player, two if you have the necessary ship module upgrades. Another new stratagem recently uncovered is the carpet bomb. When used, this calls down a massive spread of bombs across a 60 meter wide area, beginning from left to right. Carpet bombs will supposedly have three uses and will be on a 450 second cooldown. By the looks of the footage, I can't say I'm impressed. It takes a long time to call down, and the animation itself doesn't quite look finished. That being said, the ability to quite literally rain death on our enemies is intriguing. Recently revealed were also some new details about stratagems we've talked about in the past. First is the Eagle air-to-air -air missiles. Players will have access to three charges before needing to rearm. Supposedly, these missiles can destroy most flying targets near to the targeting beacon, as well as units that are towering in nature, such as Bile Titans. If true, that would make them far more practical, especially during terminated missions, where players now have to contend with Bile Titans and Shriekers at the same time. This could end up being a game changer, and with other massive enemies like the Automaton Walker that was recently leaked on the horizon, who knows, this could be a very effective stratagem. Also resurfacing for the first time in quite a while is the Super Earth Trooper Support Stratagem, which is something that was initially leaked right around launch. Players will be able to call down a dropship with six soldiers twice a mission. We expect the soldiers to aid the player and the team, and hopefully they follow the player until they inevitably die. I can see this stratagem being either amazing or complete piss, and it all comes down to the AI of the allied soldiers. Apparently, the soldiers will also deploy from a Pelican dropship similar to that of the Exosuit, which as you know, has that nose-mounted gun, which can fire off a few rounds at nearby armored targets. All right, let's pivot now and talk about a couple new stratagems, things that have recently surfaced, which I'm pretty excited about. Starting first with the GL-21 Incendiary Grenade Launcher. This is a support weapon, just like the standard grenade launcher, but upon impact also spawns an area of fire. Obviously, there's gotta be some give and take here, and the GL-21 is said to be slower than the standard grenade launcher, but can still be reloaded on the run, which is big. As long as the damage isn't reduced significantly, I can see this actually being a pretty incredible weapon on the terminated front, especially in a squad comp where ad clear is a priority. Now, the item I'm most excited about in all of these leaks is the AD-289 Angel, a support backpack drone and the first instance of a healing stratagem in the game. According to the leaks, this will heal 20 health per second and can be upgraded, I guess through ship modules, to increase healing energy reserves as well as mobile healing. What exactly that means, I'm not sure since a drone is already mobile, maybe they just mean baseline healing, but even still, it's pretty exciting. Not only will it heal players, but it'll also repair mechs, vehicles, turrets, and heal NPCs. I could easily see this becoming a staple of squad comps, and while it does take away from the firepower, it certainly fills a gap currently missing from the game. And since we're talking about backpacks, I also want to remind you that the BX-7 Displacer Pack is still floating around out there. This is a portable teleportation device that activates the moment a Helldiver is about to receive a fatal blow. I think this could be really good against the unpredictable Illuminate enemies. We still don't know exactly how that enemy faction will play out, but we do know they have their own teleportation abilities, so being able to match them with our own tech could prove useful. Let's also quickly talk about the Missile Silo. We've discussed this before on the channel, but since then, we've actually seen some awesome footage of the stratagem in action. When deployed, this calls down the silo, the missile, and a laser designator. Using that laser, the diver can paint the target, and after a brief delay, the missile will fire and deliver the payload. 
This is an incredibly powerful explosive and can one-shot most enemies in the game, as well as enemy structures such as Shrieker Towers. It does seem like a stratagem tailor-made to counter that specific threat, so I'd expect to see this actually relatively soon in the game. We've also finally seen some good footage of the Commando, and I've got to tell you guys, I think this one could end up being my go-to. This rocket launcher fires four independent laser-guided missiles, and this thing packs a huge punch. In one showcase, we see them easily destroy some bot bunkers, but I don't think the application ends there. The cool thing about the Commando is that once fired, you can continue to aim the laser and move the rockets along the trajectory. It's guided by your movements, and while that might take some practice to master, it could be huge when dealing with mobile targets like Bile Titans and Chargers. Recently revealed was also a handful of new mission-related stratagems, and I'm actually really fascinated by these because it means new missions are coming to the game. We did get a taste of something new with the Termicide Tower missions during that brief major order, and while our focus has largely been on new weapons, stratagems, and the lot, it's great to see the pieces being laid for some new mission objectives, which I think will definitely help shake up the game. We don't really know more than titles and a few scattered details, but we know of things like the Bug Breaker Drill, which can penetrate the solid walls of a terminated hide and inject a nuclear explosive. Then there's the Insect Tower Sterilizer, the Pile Hammer, and the Scrambler, all of which we know nothing more about. If all of that isn't enough, I've got great news, because not only have we got fresh gameplay of the long-anticipated Emancipator mech, that's the dual autocannon variant, but we've also learned of the new XO-51 Lumberer. This is another mech variant that features a flamethrower on one arm and supposedly a 90mm cannon on the other. Things are still a bit murky on that front, but the Gatling gun that has been found with the mech is believed to be a placeholder, which makes sense because I would guess that Arrowhead really wants to make each mech feel entirely unique. Regardless, the Lumberer is going to be an absolute beast on the terminated front. It's great to see the team continue to invest in the mechs. They were such a staple of the original game, and it's honestly one of those call-ins that has become synonymous to the series. So to hear that new variations are being planned is a huge win in my books. Guys, I wanna end with just a few brief clips from other stratagems we've talked about before, but finally have a really great look at. We'll start with the Quasar Cannon, which is my most anticipated heavy support weapon. This thing looks like a pure beast and can take down most armored targets in one shot. I just love the concept, a heavy energy weapon with a huge windup, but equally huge payoff. This thing can't be added to the game soon enough because it's seriously high on my list of things to try. We also got a glimpse at the CB9 exploding crossbow, which we believe will arrive during the upcoming Democratic Detonation Warbond. If you haven't seen our video covering that upcoming Warbond, check it out. I'm just gonna say it, this thing looks terrible, taking multiple shots to kill mid-tier enemies like Hive Guards. It's far from that explosive niche weapon I was really hoping it would be, and instead just looks like a weaker grenade launcher. It's not meant to replace a support weapon, I get that, but I fail to see where this gun could actually excel and when you would ever take it into a mission outside of something better. There's also been some footage of the Truth Whisperer circulating. This is the upcoming silenced weapon, the first of its kind in the game. Based on the gameplay that we've seen, this actually looks pretty solid, and while you'd think a silenced weapon would be lacking in some way, it actually seems to have a really good balance of damage, ammo capacity, reserve ammo, and all the things that you would want from a quality assault rifle. How much that silenced effect comes into play at this point is hard to tell, but a whole squad running silenced weapons could be interesting to check out. Finally, let's take a look at the Adjudicator. This is the upcoming DMR that we believe will also be featured in the Democratic Detonation Warbond expected in April. Sadly, this gameplay reveals exactly what I feared would be true, that the Arrowhead team just continues to hate on DMRs. The gun looks to seriously underperform, and with poor damage, a small magazine capacity, and ammo reserves, I just can't see anyone taking this into action over a better option. Come on, devs. You can do better than this, and a lot of us out here really want a solid semi-automatic option. So, as you can see, a lot is coming to this game. When and how these will be deployed? Well, that is the secret only Arrowhead knows, my friends, but it continues to be a wild ride checking out all of these leaks, and you can bet we'll be there to test them, all of the stratagems and new weapons for ourselves once they deploy into the base game. As always, if you like our Helldivers 2 content and you want more videos like this in your feed, all you have to do is hit that thumbs up and, of course, consider subscribing. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.